press. So you have to smooth all those edges down. And then, um, when I went to school, we had the old-fashioned traditional mediums. You would put a coating like this on top, and then you would scratch your design in, and then you would put it in the acid bath. And, should we go see the acid bath? All this time, filing the edges before you get wealthy enough or could afford to yeah, get some interns to do it. But that <laughs> takes a really long time, you know, sitting over there and just hand filing it so it's nice and smooth, so it's not going to make any marks in your blanket or rip your paper. So yeah. that's really the yeah. first step. And then you could do um, different things. For example, a dry point is where you don't use any other chemicals, you just carve. So that's what that is over there mm -hmm. on the the two parrots. So that's a dry point. It's just carving nothing else. Yeah. You take a needle and you hold it like a pin and you just draw. That's it. They have different now, if shapes. You want, uh -huh. If you uh -huh. want a V or if you want a U shape or you know how wide the line is going to be. Right. So there's different tools. Traditionally for dry point and copper, you use something that looks like a needle and it's called a burn. So you would put it in a bath like this, although in those days, and when I was still a student, it was more like a big tray, which meant that if you weren't careful, if you didn't go in like this, you would splash your face. Yeah. They really cleaned things up here so that now um, it's really dummy proof. You know, you would just put two clips on this end and then put it down and pull it back up, and there's no way you're going to get splashed with that. And we have how many times would you have dipped that? It would depend, yeah. Probably, you know, like Rembrandt, he did 5, 8, 12 states. Because the more you bite it, the richer the black. Yeah, okay. yeah. you have to oh. scrape the ink on the surface and then using a circular motion first with tarlatan, which is a, a woven um, rough fabric, and then with newsprint, and then with your hand to lift off just what's on the surface here and not lift out what's in the carving. Wow. Yeah, and so it's very late. Oh, the tagginess of it. But I loved that. I loved <laughs> oh, that. That's good that you Yeah, I did. I loved that high. smell. It felt like it was a no print. <laughs> I liked the idea that what I was using is the exact same thing, you know, the same recipe that an artist was using from, you know, 1560. There was something very romantic about that, you know. Uh, so now it's a little, little harder to get into the swing of thing, but I have to admit that when it comes time for cleanup, I'm delighted. I'm delighted it doesn't take me two hours to clean it up and that I don't have to package it up and put it in the trash can with the tight-fitting lid, you know, because it's um, considered a air pollutant. Right. Um, and I like the fact that I don't have to worry if there's kids around that they're inhaling something that's going to be really bad for them. And some of these five colors still have the same be a collector's item because you know, no one will be using phone books. Phone books, yeah. You can't find anything it's, in them. Right, that's really hard I too. Use my computer, I don't even. Isn't that handy? Phone it that's really is. Right, do. it's yeah. really handy. You can see the hours. So you just want to pick up the top layers of ink, and you can feel the surface through. So I'm just using the uh, the meaty part of my fingers. And for those who might have um, sensory issues, I have the box of Cheesehead Dave's gloves. If there is anyone here. Cheesehead Dave. Yeah. It's important this week. Yes. Yeah. And you can see um, that the wiping process is extremely time consuming. Mm -hmm. it, you, there are no shortcuts because if you, if you press too hard, if you gouge into the surface, you're lifting off too much ink and you kind of have to start over. Mm. You would probably okay. Now, yeah. these are three oh, very okay. traditional printmaking papers that are, um, that have been used okay. for hundreds of years. And why are you doing that? Um, I think the ink adheres a little bit better when the paper is wet okay. than um, when the dryer is dry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and where did you go to school? I um, started at Oshkosh and I finished at Carroll. 
And um, I've also taken workshops at Columbia. And a long time ago, when Maya used to have um, open studio Saturday mornings, I would go up there. And um, at that time, Dorota Biso was the um, monitor. And then she opened a um, print shop. And that's where we got our other press over there because then she decided to um, go back to Poland and she went through the hard way. Yes. Yes. yes, the plate oh, and yeah. the paper are in there. And then and, the blanket goes over. And then there's three blankets. And when it comes out, we want to have enough pressure. This, I have it set a little tight right now because it was too loose before. Um, that's always a learning curve. And the plexi is a little thicker than the Sintra. But you want enough pressure so that you have a plate mark. So you see the edges of the plate. Not so much that you put a hole in your paper. That would be too much. But you can almost see an embossed surface. Mm -hmm. Because the plexi, using that Dremel tool, I did get much deeper than my Sintra with just carving it with a needle. So it's still very dark, but you can kind of see the figures emerging. Mm -hmm. Now what if you try you to print it again? I'm going to.